Hello, my name is Dr. Abigail Miranda. I'm an educational and child psychologist. So my job usually involves going into schools and meeting children and parents and teachers. Due to this quarantine period, I'm unable to do that and I'm trying to do what I can remotely to support our teachers in schools and parents, as well as simultaneously supporting my own two children with their home learning. I'm sure many of you are in this position where you're juggling work commitments and trying to educate your children who are at home. And this is by no means an easy task. So that's why I thought I'd bring you this video tutorial to help you to teach your child their multiplication tables. Now, not all children are going to need this level of support. Some children will pick this up really quickly just by rote learning. Some others might need some additional support and help. So I thought that this is a really good way with just 10 minutes a day that you can chip away at helping your child to learn the times tables. I have to download a couple of documents from the John and Gwyn website and I will link to that website so you can easily find them. One of them will be a probe which is an excel document and the other one will be a probe recording sheet so that will be how you record your child's answers and as I said before you'll need 10 minutes to spend eight minutes teaching and roughly a minute testing and a minute recording and plotting the results on a graph. Hopefully I can break this down to you so it doesn't seem too daunting and that you'll be able to see some really good results after a short period of time working through with your child. The other document I'd like you to download is a times table grid. So having the times tables on it. You can create one of these if you haven't got a printer at home just with a ruler and a pencil and fill in the numbers. Once you've done this, you can test your child on their times tables. Now I would recommend testing them not in the order, so just randomise it slightly. This is Shai. Shai, say hello to everybody. Um, hi, camera. <laughs> so we're going to do some times table questions. So Shai, what's two times two? Four. What's three times nine? Twenty-seven. What's four times four? What five times six? So now you have completed testing your child's knowledge. You can mark the questions off on the grid and the grid that you should have should look something like this. And you can see from the grid that the white spaces are the times tables that he needs more practice with and more support with to learn. But the positive thing is you can see that some of the times tables I thought that he knew nothing about, there is some overlap. So he doesn't have to learn the entire thing and he can learn some questions rather than the whole times table from one to 12. Now that's quite motivating and reinforcing, not just for him, but for me as well, because it makes the task more manageable. Using the probe you downloaded earlier, you can add the questions that you'd like your child to focus on. So for year twos, you'd want them to know their twos, fives and tens. And for year threes, you'd want them to know those times tables plus the threes, fours and eights. So these were the ones that I would be primarily focusing on for my son, but you decide which ones your child needs to learn. So enter those into the probe and then the Excel program will randomly generate questions for your child to answer. This will provide the knowledge check when you finished your eight minutes of teaching. During your eight minutes of teaching, you can use whatever resources you'd like to help your child learn these specific questions. So you can use concrete objects, which are real objects, or pictorial, so drawing pictures of arrays. So an array is a grid, or you could use just the numbers, depending on what stage your child is at. So you really don't want to skip the concrete and pictorial stage because it means that your child will have a mental representation, almost a, a mental image of what the numbers should look like. And this will help them when they have to multiply beyond 12. Now, 
you have finished teaching, you go to the grid and check their knowledge and check how many answers they can answer correctly within one minute. Do this over a course of days and you will see that you're able to join the dots and make a slope. Now, ideally, you'd want a slope that's not too high because that shows the task is too easy and not too low because it shows it's too challenging. I will show you some examples of slopes so you get an understanding of what your child should look like. So you can either make the task more challenging by adding more questions in or simplify it by focusing on fewer questions per eight minute teaching slot. Once your child has answered a question correctly on three or four occasions, you can mark it off on their grid and then your child will be able to see their progress and how many fewer white squares they'll have over time. I hope that this process makes learning the times tables easier for you. You can use this process for any type of skill learning where you don't expect the child to forget. For example, it can also be used for division. It's used very commonly for literacy, for spelling, for reading. There are lots of different applications of precision teaching. But today I thought I'd focus on multiplications and I hope that you find this video useful and it makes your time homeschooling your child whilst we are on lockdown slightly easier and gives you some time to concentrate on more fun things within the house. And remember, it's so important to ensure that your child has nurturing experiences and they have got room for fun within their timetable of schooling. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it useful.